Hi guys, my name is Girish Bally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week. Today, we're going to talk to you about vegan food or vegan diet or vegan, vegan something. How about that? And today we're going to talk to a person that I've been talking to her for weeks now on Clubhouse. And we kind of are on the same wavelength when it comes to vegan, when it comes to life, when it comes to basic of life. So that is why I brought her into this show today. And hopefully we'll make some wonders out of this whole show. And I hope you will too. And give me good feedback too at the same time. Even if it is bad, do let me know why. Because you know what? Me and Mika are trying to make as much awareness as possible when it comes to vegan food. So let's get into it. So Mika, how are you? And thanks for coming to Back to Basics. Thank you for having me, Garris. And uh, to your audience, thank you for having me also. And uh, I'm doing great, you know? Uh, you know, uh, you and I, like you said, we have a similar point of view. So it's going back to basics and food is one of them. Absolutely. Before we get into the to the vegan food and everything else that what we're going to talk about today, what does what does back to basic mean to you? Back to basics for me means just making a conscious effort to eat foods that that you can prepare or, you know, uh, you're ordering it from places that kind of prepare wholesome food for you food that you can pronounce, food that doesn't require a shelf life, like where they didn't, uh, a company didn't add any additives, preservatives, chemicals to make it last for eight months on the shelf or two years on the shelf Hmm. of your supermarket. Instead, it's food that you can pronounce, you can uh, prepare real quick and eat, and your body can consume and that's going back to basics food that you're that's going to nourish you you don't have to eat perfect you can eat like you can kind of eat uh you can eat some fried foods you can eat some pastries desserts you know in moderation right but as long as you know that it's something that has simple ingredients and that you've prepared or someone else has prepared yeah, thank you so much, Mika, for coming on my show, first of all, and thank you so much uh, for accepting it, and uh, we're going to have a great time. Thank you so much for that. Okay. So so before we get into the details of the vegan uh, subject today, okay, let's be clear, vegan and vegetarian are two different things. Can you just explain that to people, and can you explain in a in a simple and a basic way for how to explain to people like that? Yes, because some people still don't know what the word vegan means. And I get that is um, I don't think it's, you know, some people go, it's odd that some people don't know what the word vegan means and that lifestyle. I don't think it's odd because six years ago when I went vegan, I didn't know what the word meant, you know, so I'm, I definitely don't knock anyone else who, who doesn't know what that word means today. So um the difference is, is that vegetarians uh, don't eat meat, but um, they have a lifestyle where they'll still consume maybe some dairy, some eggs, um, those type of products, uh, honey. So that's vegetarian. Vegan, veganism is basically a person that has a lifestyle of uh, no animal products. So no animal products in the shampoos, no animal products in your car, like leather or your sofa. So your living room is like, there's no animal products and definitely in your body, not eating any honey, which is an animal product. And um, of course, dairy, not eating dairy or eggs or cheese. So you're eating good, just not eating animals and having a lifestyle where there's not based on animal products. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. So let me uh, let me step back a little, right? Uh, let's say for no- vegetarians and non-veg, okay? When we say non-veg, we're talking about meat and everything else that we eat. Yes. When we're talking vegetarian, are we minusing even fish also? 
You know, that's a very interesting question because there's some vegetarians that don't consume fish, uh, seafood, and there's some vegetarians that do. So go figure. So, um, but at least, but they've, they've agreed at least on meat, on, on eating like, like pork and beef and, and chicken. Um, they've agreed just not eating meat as vegetarians. Yeah, because there's some people that I know that they they are vegetarians, but they still eat chicken, which made no sense at all. So that's <laughs> that's why I wanted to make sure we understand that it's not only red meat; it's also right. every meat that you can think of, yes. uh, which is vegetarian. You know that you're not supposed to eat that at all. Uh, so now we got to differentiate between the non-veg and the veg. So now let's go with the veg and the vegan part, if you don't mind. So. You said that animal products, you're talking even milk, you're talking, what else are we talking? We're talking honey, we're talking everything else. So, so does that mean that I just need to be on diet and just not eat at all? You no, Garrison, you can eat anything you want. Like I eat anything I want. I can eat a, you know, I was eating a, a taco, a burrito yesterday. Um, you can eat, um, you can eat pizza. You can eat an amazing, uh, you know, egg, roasted eggplant uh, sandwich, eggplant parm. We make eggplant parm at our vegan bakery, mm -hmm. uh, Victor Mika's Bakery in Florida. So I'm a co-owner of a vegan bakery. Mm -hmm. So uh, ice cream and also pastas and lasagnas and, and so many different options. We just eat it. We make it without animal products. So you could eat Garrett's just, um, we do it differently. We just do it without animal products. So we'll use, um, for example, we'll do eggplant parm and, and as popular in, in, in Italy, where instead of doing a chicken parm, we do an eggplant parm. We do an eggplant parm and use plant-based cheese and creams instead of like uh, re traditional dairy cheeses and creams. So mm. there are options out there. Okay. So you just brought up a good point when you said plant-based cheese, what, what is that? What am I looking at when I'm actually at the grocery store? What is there something that it tells me that this is a vegan cheese versus a regular cheese? Great question. And your audience, maybe some of you guys in the audience have that type of question too. And um, don't know if you knew this, but 75% of Americans are lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. So that would apply. So if you get some discomfort in your belly when you have uh, an ice cream or uh, a dairy ice cream or a dairy, you know, maybe you made a, a baked potato with lots of butter and you got this discomfort from that, pay attention to your clues because you could be lactose intolerant where your body's just not breaking down dairy as well as you would like it to. And um, you may want to look into some plant-based alternatives because it's going to really help your digestion get rid of inflammation. So you would find plant-based uh, cheeses, some stores, your, check out your local supermarket, they could have a plant-based product section in the stores. So you could actually uh, go to the counter and ask them, where would I find some plant-based, you know, cheeses or plant-based milks? Some milks are actually with regular uh, milks in the, in the supermarkets and the grocery stores. So you can find them. They'll say things like oat milk, rice milk, coconut milk, almond milk, hemp milk, flax milk macadamia nut milk, <laughs> the list goes on. So you could find it in the uh, next to the regular, the other products that have dairy. And for some other products, it could have its own specialty, you know, aisle and section. So ask and then, uh, and, you know, let them know where would I find these products and they'll guide you because every store is a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. So I, so I, I guess I might have to look at the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the one gallon that I have and it says, uh, you know, the almond milk. Is there like a keyword that actually says plant-based or is it just we already understood that almonds are plant-based? Yeah, they count it as plant-based. So it's a nut, but it's counted as plant-based. 
So when you uh, go to a store, it will say in bold letters what it derives from, because that's a great like selling marketing tool for these uh, these companies that make it and brand it. So oat milk is they'll say it in really bold letters, oat milk because it's a great marketing branding tool from these companies. And then, um, by the way, oak milk is delicious. You would never, <laughs> it's really good and it's great that they've made ice cream with it. You'd never know that these things are, uh, especially oat milk, it's so, um, it has a lot of the flavors. I don't know if it's because of the starch and oats, but it's really delicious as a milk substitute. Yeah, thank you so much. So. Now let's step back and let's talk about your, your book, if you don't mind. Um, so what is the name of the book and how has it helped you and others with this book? Wow, that is another great question. So the book is, um, I'll answer your first question. It's uh, Chasing Vegan, Baking Vegan Fun. And... Uh, here it is here. Awesome. Here we go. So this book, um, and Gears, uh, please send me your address and I'd love to send you a copy of this book and I'll, I'll sign it. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, make sure when you sign it, it's clear so then I can sell it on eBay next time. Oh, I'll do my best. Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> Thank you. No, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so the book you can find on Barnes and Nobles. Uh, you can Google... Um, we recently took it down on Amazon, but you can still, it'll go, we're doing a new a second edition. So that'll go back on Amazon. So if you Google uh, Chasing Vegan, Bacon Vegan Fun, there's so many other these companies selling the book. Martha Stewart has it on her website. So for her books section. So the book, from what the customers have told me and the reviews that I've read on Amazon and the messages that I've gotten on, you know, privately from people is that it's helped them so much being able to bake easily for their children, for themselves, for their, for their partners. And it's not so stressful. It's not so complicated. And that I've bridged uh, their, what their desires are, what their final outcome of their product so easily with the cookbook. Yeah, thank you so much. So obviously, you are going to be endorsing your vegan uh, yeah. lifestyle. Okay. But just a question from a regular consumer, if you don't mind. Is there a benefit and a disadvantage to being a vegan? Yes, there are. Um, the advantages of being vegan, and I have not been asked that question. So this is a, this is a great one to tackle. The, the advantages of being vegan is that you have a lifestyle where there is no cholesterol. So if there's someone out there that's suffering from high cholesterol and um, with a vegan diet, there is no cholesterol because there's no animal products. There's just no cholesterol. And not only that, people that are vegan, uh, plant-based, they are... Um, their immune system is, uh, they have a higher quality immune system. So their, their body, their immune system is, is less uh, susceptible to getting uh, viruses, bacteria, diseases, and um, their weight is lower and traditionally, but there are some junk food vegans out there. So yeah, so there are some junk food vegans, but overall, and we're talking overall, uh, vegans have a healthier lifestyle, more active, um, definitely consume a lot more plants, a lot, a lot more vegetables, produce overall compared to meat eater. Um, uh, the, the hormones are like more leveled, more, uh, more balanced with, uh, because meat does spike people's hormones. And what else? Um, those are some of the things that come to that I can recall off the top of my head right now. The disadvantages is if someone is a vegan, but they lack um, researching and understanding, they lack information. Uh, anytime you you make a change in your diet, you make a change in your lifestyle, and and you don't educate yourself 
then you've you've placed yourself at a disadvantage because of that lack of knowledge gives you a lack of you know implementing and that's going to give you a disadvantage so if someone becomes a vegan and they don't uh they don't think of options of okay uh like b12 that that type of supplement what can i do because even meat eaters have a can have deficiencies with b12 Mm -hmm. so um because you know b12 the cows get it from the grass and we should be getting our b12 from where that cow gets it so um so definitely uh someone that becomes a vegan but they don't educate themselves and they don't pay attention to their bodies you know, it's good to consult with a physician and see like, what am I naturally lacking? What hereditary issues do I have? Or I, I was a smoker, not me personally, but I just say if someone was a smoker, I'm a smoker and now I'm going vegan. And what am I going to run into? What some health issues? What are some withdrawal issues? Things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's good to understand your body and and get what the doctor that's going to help you with understanding what you could be naturally deficient in and um or what you're currently not naturally but what you're currently deficient in so that when you do become vegan you you make that transition you are aware of your body and what your body needs and so that you source uh great omega threes and sixes that you can get from and knowing where you can get that from flax and from chia seeds and almonds and dark chocolates. So yes, dark chocolate is very, very good for you. And it's one of the top five foods high into uh, antioxidants and minerals like magnesium and zinc. Those are minerals that the body vitally needs for the functions um, of your cells. So zinc is really important. Um, anxiety creeps in so easily when we're deficient in zinc and magnesium and potassium, uh, you're going to run into some issues, vegan or not, when you're deficient into those minerals, uh, anxiety spikes. So some people feel anxiety and it's because of their diet, they're lacking omega-3s, they're lacking zinc, magnesium, potassium. So you may not have an anxiety problem. You could be deficient into those minerals. So uh, so going into being vegan, educate yourself and knowing that, oh, dark, make sure that I've got my, my uh, pantry stocked with or in refrigerator with spinach and kale and um, get some bananas. And oh, I'm allergic to bananas. Okay, what's a substitute? You just research and without a label, without a vegan or non-vegan label, research what what people can eat for those type of minerals. Yeah, thank you so much for that, by the way. And uh, it's great to have an insight between a advantage and disadvantage when it comes to vegan. And people need to be aware. We're not trying to hear sell that you need to be vegan. They need to understand. They need to study it. They need to understand it. And, and, and you are the right person for that. So thank you uh, for that, by the way. No, my pleasure. So now here's the thing. Now with the lifestyle change, okay, um, I'm going to a restaurant, okay? After so many years of going to the restaurant, they are actually talking about gluten-free now, okay? After so many years that I've been here. Now... I don't think most of the restaurants have vegan. And if they do, it might be really a small amount of restaurants. Mm -hmm. So how do we make that awareness that can you put that on their ingredients or their menu? Or is there a certain places that we can look at and keywords that we can look at? That is a great question. Garish. Oh, wow. I've never been asked that question. Like you've literally have asked me like three or four questions. I've never been asked before. Um, this is fantastic uh, because that is a real question. That's a real person would have, you know, and okay. So many people have been diagnosed. They've gone to their doctor. They tell their doctor, I feel real sick after, you know, I, I've been feeling sick lately. I've been feeling this, like I'm having, um, 
I I'm having digestive issues. I'm I'm feeling terrible. And the doctor goes, okay, well, when do you feel like this? And then and the person says, well, I've been feeling like this all day. And and then the doctor says, well, what have you been doing? And then long story short, it comes down to the person uh, that uh, says some things about eating. And then the doctor goes, okay, let's run some tests. This person that's been able to eat gluten for 20 plus years, 30 plus years, 40 plus years, 50 plus years is now being diagnosed with gluten free. Hmm. If that's you out there listening where you've been diagnosed with um, uh, gluten intolerant, sorry, I've said diagnosed with gluten free. Mm -hmm. If you've been diagnosed with now being gluten intolerant mm -hmm. and that you get really sick after eating gluten, uh, you're not alone. I had a customer last week that came to us at the bakery and they got diagnosed last year. This person is in, you know, their, their thirties and said, yeah, I got diagnosed with being gluten intolerant last year because I get real sick. So now I'm forced to eat gluten free. Mm. And so if you, what you can do is if contact these restaurants that you like, contact these restaurants and say, because your voice matters because these restaurants, they want your business. They need your business. And they may not give you an answer at that moment if they have no gluten-free options other than a salad, French fries, if, if they're not you know, battered in, in flour before mm -hmm. frying. So contact them. They may not be able to say, yes, we have a gluten-free option for you. Come on in. However, when you tell enough restaurants and then other people call and tell enough restaurants and that happens, it's going to make that restaurant, it's going to eventually get to the manager. It's going to be able, it's going to eventually get to someone that's going to go, wait a minute, there's a trend. Because that is something that I, because I'm a bakery owner and when there's, I've got enough people asking me for something, then guess what? I am going to be a smart businesswoman, bakery owner, you know, cafe owner, and I'm going to go, okay, let's look into this. So this is what will happen when you speak up, when you tell, when you share what you're intolerant and maybe you're keto. And so you, the same thing for you, contact these places and request, well, do you have anything? If not, when do you see this adding to the menu. And even though, again, they may not have an answer for you right then, this is going to make a big impression on them, on these restaurants. And there are restaurants out there that they may not be in your neck of the woods. You may have to travel for a little bit, but there are restaurants out there that will be able to cater to you. Like we, for example, we cater to gluten-free and also keto. So just, they are out there. You just uh, start with your favorite places. And if they're, they don't, they can't, you know, accommodate your current lifestyle, then you then reach out, you broaden the, the, your net. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Now, I'm, I'm not going to mention any restaurant's name, but I went to a restaurant recently, maybe a couple of months back. Okay. And amazing food. And it's okay. actually a farm, uh, a farm restaurant, which is all plant-based. Now it's an amazing place. So do I assume that that farm place and that farm restaurant is considered a vegan place? Okay. That is an excellent question. I have never, and I've been interviewed a lot and I've never been asked this question. That is a fantastic question because just because some uh, place is called plant-based does not mean that it is 100% vegan mm -hmm. because honey is plant-based, but it is not vegan. So vegans, again, is a lifestyle of not consuming any animal products or where, or it's just a, a list of lifestyles. So not just consuming, but purchasing. So no leathers in a car. Um, no fishing because that's not vegan, right? So, right. So, but a plant-based person may still, will still fish, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's their prerogative if they, sure. 
if they decide to, um, if they're like, okay, I'm going to go fishing, then they're plant based. And so, uh, and there are some plant based people that will not go fishing because maybe they're against it. But mm -hmm. honey is not plant based. I'm sorry, honey is plant based, but not vegan. So mm -hmm. that facility, that restaurant, it could be it's plant based, but it doesn't mean that it's vegan. And but however, there are plant based places, they'll call themselves plant based, but there are no animal products whatsoever. Mm. So but they are plant based, and they could also be considered vegan, of course. So it depends, uh, you just we pay attention to what, how people define themselves, how a organization defines themselves, because like you said a moment ago, Garish, where someone goes, Oh, no, 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 I'm vegetarian. But I eat chicken. <laughs> then that's, uh, right. that's not so it's good to pay attention to that because there's some people uh, and I've heard the same exact thing. I've heard some people go, I'm vegan. And then they go, um, and then sometimes I eat pork. And it's like, uh, okay. And so that person may not fully understand the definitions. So, and it's not a matter of debate. I don't, I choose not to get into a debate. If someone says I am, they label themselves, but then they eat in a way that doesn't support that they may lack understanding. So it will be nonsense for me to get into a, a debate with that person. I, I don't have time for it. And number one, and number two, is just like how many people are walking this world and they they say things, but they don't fully understand, understand. it. Right. You know, they don't understand the concept of it. I mean, that just makes them human. It doesn't make them evil. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make them, you know, it may sound, it may be a little ignorant, but they don't know. So I don't knock but them. Just, but that's okay. If they don't know, that's, that, that's our job to, that's why we're doing this podcast to make people aware that, you know what, there, there is a difference between a non-veg, a veg and a vegan. And that's okay if they don't know. Uh, so, so that's why I'm asking all these questions that these consumers and myself, are kind of aware, uh, unaware, I should say. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that, by the way. And and oh. one more question, if you don't mind, before we get to the fun questions, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the the question that I have is, do you consider uh, considered a, a person who eats egg is vegetarian, or is that considered non-veg? That is vegetarian. There are some vegetarians that will eat eggs. They just don't like the, they don't like the feeling of eating flesh, of eating animal meat, mm. but they will, some, not every single one, but some will eat eggs and will eat dairy. Mm. So is eggs considered vegan? No. No, because it's coming out of the, uh, the live animals, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So vegans are like, no, we're not eating uh, eggs, so no animal products, even like, uh, like, uh, like, like we mentioned a moment ago, like uh, leather in a car. So there will be some vegans that are, uh, you know, they'll buy a brand new car. And then, um, for example, Mercedes, they have um, for their G wagon, I don't know if this is for every uh, high end car that they have, but it comes with leather. So from the manufacturers it's automatic. So a vegan, you know, person that's purchased a brand new Mercedes will then have to request from the manufacturer for it to be a, uh, another type of material instead of, instead of leather, you know, and shoes, instead of it being leather or suede or wool that comes from animals, they'll, uh, purchase shoes that are not made with any animal products. So a vegan is just, it's a complete lifestyle, like. Um, anything that's dealing with exploitation of animals, yeah, whether I it's mean, like, yeah, no, no, but right now we're only talking about food. We're not even talking the other, other aspect of it either. Right. Uh, you just brought up a good point. And that was my next question. Uh, uh, right before the fun question was that now I can't even buy a car, which has a uh, leather seats, or I can't even go and buy, let's say a Gucci purse, because that's also leather too, or even coach for that matter. Right. I'm just giving you small examples that there are other examples also out there. Oh, yeah. And, and then including shoes, too. So it seems like 
it's a whole big change uh, of this. So how do we how do we make people aware that when they say vegan, that actually means everything that needs to change? Everything. Well, okay. So you you just said a lot, and those are very great questions. Sometimes it's like somebody that's like a kid, you know, uh, that's like, okay, I want to go into sports. I want to go into football. Then you can't really expect for them to know every, like they're just starting into this. They're like, I'm passionate about this. I want to do it. We can't lay it all on the kid on that first day, right? We can't train him, teach him everything that he needs to know about blocking, tackling, running, uh, fumble, all this stuff in one shot. That's going to overwhelm that kid. And so for someone that's making a change, a lifestyle change into veganism, uh, it's the same goes there. We don't really want to overwhelm somebody and then scare them. And um, whenever the feeling of being overwhelmed, it's very stressful, very unnecessary. And I don't want to lay that on anyone. No. So no, right? With, as far as the cars, you can get, uh, like we mentioned a moment ago, these uh, someone that buys a car, Mercedes or any other brand, the the cars, you can choose, like just say, you know, uh, I'd like it with uh, another material and the manufacturer does it for you. You know, Mercedes-Benz is great for that. The Gucci belt, now a lot of these high-end designers are using... Uh, non-animal products mm. like Gucci, uh, like uh, Roberto Cavalli and Armani and all these Dior and all these other brands, they're now using a lot of products that are um, just not animal products mm. and they're advertising it. And it's, uh, it's, it's everywhere, literally everywhere. It's for shoes, for clothing, for accessories like belts and I mean, it's there. Watches for your whisk brand. It's going to be um, non-animal products. So they are out there. And I don't uh, don't want to lay any guilt trips on someone who's wearing a leather watch right now, whisk brand uh, watch, or a leather or suede, uh, you know, belt right now. It's not to lay a guilt trip on you. No, of course not. Uh, right? It's just, um, just knowing that you've got options. And that's the cool thing is that now with the advancements of technology and social awareness related to animals and all the stuff that's going on, we have, we know that we have options on how we can purchase our clothes, accessories, our cars, and, and eating good without animal products to basically leave less of a carbon footprint so we can go back to basics, just like this podcast. Yeah, thank you so much, by the way. So if I want to be vegan, I anybody, if I want to be a vegan eater, okay? Yeah. Is it okay for me to drive the car with the leather seats? Okay, again, I am no one's judge. And, and I know that there's some people out there, they... They're quick to point out what someone has that's wrong or what someone is doing that's wrong or that someone's opinion's wrong. Your opinion is wrong. You're wrong. And I hear that a lot. And I hear people, they, there's this entitlement. There's this need to, to judge. Guys, life is short. Yes. Life is short. I am... I'm definitely not going to add, I'm not going to jump in that bandwagon of judging anyone. So, so, so here's a, here's a quick question for you. So if I do that, do I call myself a vegetarian or a vegan? If someone is driving with leather, then mm-hmm. um, eating, I would say that and eat, well, depends and on eating what depends on what you eat and eating vegan, then they're, they're plant-based. They're plant-based, they're not vegan, because vegan is the, the whole lifestyle. Yeah. The yeah. whole lifestyle without animal products. So I don't want you to feel like uh, guilt 
if you're driving in a leather car, I know I've heard some vegans say that. Sure. Uh, yeah. Some vegans in, um, th that are, we have a vegan group. So I, w I remember one vegan telling me that. And so, cause their car, they have a car, their family car has leather. Look, you change it. The event, when, whenever you're ready, you make that change. Like who am I to judge and, and condemn someone <laughs> for having sure, leather sure. in their car? That's, you know, there's only one judge and that's God. And so whenever that person has the financial means and to trade in their car or to change the leather or whatever it is, then, then they do that. Yeah. So the fact that someone is making a conscious effort to consume less, less animal products and to make each time they spend a dollar and they're spending their money with, with small businesses and also large businesses and mid-sized businesses where it's going to be sustainable uh, products and, and foods like uh, products that aren't involving any animal products like coconut milk, rice milk, or, you know, uh, dairy-free cheeses, things like that. Um, they're, they're voting with their dollars and they're doing what counts. So that's great. They're taking their steps to eventually get to the end goal of, of being a whole vegan lifestyle. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm not going to knock someone because they're not there today. Of course not. Of course not. Just give me one second here, Mika. So let me mm -hmm. talk to my audience one second. So guys, when you say that you are a non-veg, we know yeah. what that means. You're eating meat. Okay. And everything else, including vegetarian stuff. But when you're a vegetarian, it means that you are eating somewhat uh, meat stuff, not meat stuff. Am I right? Now, when it comes to vegan, you're minusing all that out and you are going plant-based. So when you say vegan, that's what it means. But it also means lifestyle, uh, lifestyle change, just like what Mika mentioned. You know, no leather, no Gucci bag, plant-based only. That's what we're trying to say here. So just when you say vegan, just make sure that you are aware and just listen to this whole podcast, whatever we've done so far. So Mika, thank you again, by the way. And now the fun stuff. The fun stuff is very quickly about your bakery. Yeah. How fun is it to have a bakery, a vegan bakery? Because you know what? According to me, bakery means indulging on all the pastries and all the egg uh, objects into this one pastry, I guess. So explain yeah. to me, how can we make it fun? Well, oh my gosh. Um, I love my job. There, of course, there's some aspects of my job that I don't love, like cleaning up. Of course. And um, who loves that? Um, or doing some of the technical stuff, like when I have to cut the parchment paper to fit each, you know, different size pans. But creating, I absolutely love. I love the smell of fresh baked bread coming like while it's baking. Like it's the, the smell of uh, fresh donuts. And um, by the way, we're voted top three best vegan donuts in the United States by Veg News Magazine, a worldwide magazine. So very honored for that. So Veg News, if you're listening, thank you so much. And um, all of our other international uh, uh, press, like Jane on Chain, um, where we've been featured in uh, for doing cooking demos. Thank you. So, um, so we like. I love. I I don't know. I'm just. I love food. I love the smell of things cooking. It's it just drives me crazy. So the way you make it fun, like with a vegan bakery. We are no different than an, another amazing bakery in the United States. Mm -hmm. Just we do it with no eggs, no dairy. And it, like our donuts, you would never know that they were vegan mm. unless I tell you. Of course, of course, of course definitely. <laughs> you, right. You'd never know. Of course. So Mika, you have a, a podcast. You made a book. You're making a second edition. You're yeah. mailing back that book to me, signed also. Yeah. Plus, you also have a bakery. Now, and then you came on my podcast. Yeah. 
what are we doing for the next five more years? It seems like you have done so much already. I know it's a good question. Um, okay, I'm very. I want to say this to your audience listening, to your back to basics audience listening. I want to say that you are the creator of your life. You can do whatever the heck you want to do. The age does not define you or limit you. Someone else can say that it defines you and limits you. Don't claim it, you know, don't accept it. This is your life. You're not done until it's your last day. So if you're here, do whatever it is you want to do. Go after whatever it is you want to do. There is nothing that can hold you, your vision. Hold on to it. It's yours. I think every single person is, is born with a gift inside of you. And the only person standing in your way is you. you yeah. You're the only person. If you did not, if you're not doing what it is you want to do, it's not the government's fault. It's not your mom's fault, your dad's fault. It's not your ex's fault. It's, you know, it's not the circumstances. You have power, more power than you can ever imagine. I challenge you to look at life a little differently because the power to do something is in you. Trust me, you have the power to do that. And um, I've done, yes, I've done so much. I, I did a cookbook. Uh, we have the Obsessed podcast uh, ranked globally top 5%, um, was ranked globally. I don't know where we are right now, but uh, you can check us out, the Obsessed podcast, um, Obsessed with Humans on the Verge of Change. I co-host with Julie and, uh, and Tia, which Garrett knows very well and have been on your show. And um, and yeah, I've, you know, and I'm opening the brick and mortar next Friday. Next Friday, open up a a, um, a, a, a huge brick and mortar. So uh, what's next? And, and trust me, I am scared. Don't, like, I don't want anyone to think that I am perfect and I've got things figured out. Oh, no. I am, I am walking in faith. I am doing my due diligence. I am preparing myself as like as much as I can, but this is the unknown. I, I purposely place myself in uncomfortable positions. This is one of them. Do I know what's around the corner? No. Do I try to minimize the risk? Yes. I try to do my best. Mm -hmm. And so am I doing this fearlessly? I've got one hand with God and one hand over my heart as I walk. <laughs> Sure. That's how, that's how much my heart is beating. It's racing. So that's, and I rather, I rather take a chance on, on the unknown than to live a common life where I'm not doing anything where I'm just comfortable and just like every day is the same. I do my, like a nine to five doing it the same life is the same. There's no challenges, there's no risk, there's no growth, there's no taking chances on opportunities and just not existing on my deathbed. I'm going to have a whole lot of regrets and I cannot accept that. Sure, sure. So uh, what's next is uh, more uh, keynote speaking and speaking nationally on TV. So I've done, I'm doing some TV now, which is great. I've been doing TV even before the bakery. So doing more national television and um, becoming more of a household name and a leader, uh, one of the leaders in a vegan community. I never really thought of myself as that or looked for that. I just felt like I'm a regular, normal person sure. who happens to be doing things vegan, but um, the things we've done is revolutionary. Like I'm the first in my community I'm the, and, and in our state, I am, uh, I think I'm the first, um, I'm the first to have done a vegan and gluten-free bakery being a black woman in the whole state of Florida. 
on this level. So I've created history in so many different ways, so many different ways to create a history. So your gift that you have and you that's listening and watching this, this podcast, watching on YouTube, your gift will bring you into places that you didn't plan. It wasn't your plan. You just stayed true to your vision and to your, your gift, but your purpose brings you to places that you never thought possible, but here you are. That's so right. that's what it's going to be for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mika, for coming on my show and making this brighter and trying to talk about and dissecting the, the, the vegan word and what it means and what it does not mean and what type of lifestyle that we, we need to change if we say the word vegan. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. And thank you again for coming on my show and, and hopefully you'll come back again with the edition 22, let's say, and uh, it will be great to have you again. Thank you. I would be honored. I'll be honored. I'll, I'll be back again and again. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Mika. And uh, please support me in, uh, on my uh, journey that I have on my podcast. Thank you again. Definitely. You have my support and I'm going to give, if I haven't already done so, which I believe I have, I'm going to give you another five-star rating. Awesome. If I haven't already done so. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Mika. And uh, God, God bless. God bless you. Thank you. So guys, we spoke with Mika today. We talked about the basics of uh, veganism. veganism. And what did she say? She says that, you know what, if you put your mind to it, you can make it happen. And that's what she did. She's a black woman. She's a vegan lady. And she's made it history already. What else can she do? I'm pretty sure there'll be other things that she can do definitely a second book well that she's already doing but i think edition 22 that's what we're aiming for so guys just keep in mind what we talked about today is veganism and we should care about the world and that's what it's all about it's all about back to basics as usual as always there is a quote of the day from back to basics and here's a quote of the day the quote of the day is the love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man now, guys, that's what we all said. Care about the world, care about everything else around you, who's living and who's also obviously dead. But just keep in mind, keep the chin up and enjoy world. That's what she said. Now, remember what I say at the end of the episode, everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care, God bless. Watch me on YouTube. Listen to me on all the audio platforms that I have. Keep on subscribing. Keep on commenting. Good, bad, ugly, either way, it will make my show stronger day by day. Give you great guests on my show and great content and definitely awesome host. Guys, take care. God bless and I'll see you next week.